Hello guys, I'm Yadagi Reddy and welcome to my channel HVI Tutorials. In this video, I'll explain about parallel execution with data provider in TestNG. So this is the topic for today's session guys. So here we are going to discuss about these two points. So the first one is how to execute the test parallelly with data provider and then how to control the thread count when using data provider. So this is the agenda guys. Okay. So let's get started. So the first thing is how to execute the test parallelly with data provider. So till now what we did, we have created the data provider and we are feeding the data from the data provider to the test method, but it is executing one by one sequentially, right? So let's say for example, so this is the class that I have actually created in my first data provider class guys. So I have created almost five data provider sessions till now. So in first video of the data provider, I have created this class. So here I have created one, one class with one test method and one data provider. So this data provider is supplying the username and password. So multiple sets of username and password to the test method. So here I'm reading the username and password. So I'm opening the orange HRM demo website and I'm entering the username and password and I click on login and I'll verify whether the home page is displayed or not. Okay. So I'm verifying based on the welcome message. So if the home page is displayed, the test will be passed and it will close the browser. If the home page is not displayed, that means if the username and password are incorrect, then the home page will not be displayed and the browser will not be closed. So this is a simple test guys. So if I execute this test, what happens? First, this set of data will go and it will execute. And after completing this test, this set of data will go and it will execute, right? So even if you have hundred sets of data also now, it will go sequentially. So one after other, one after other, it will go and execute guys. So with this approach, we are wasting the time, right? Why? Because for suppose, let's say one test is taking one minute of time and you are executing hundred, hundred test cases. So how much time it will actually consume? It will consume hundred minutes, right? So hundred minutes is around like one hour, 40 minutes. So it is going to consume one hour, 40 minutes. So your system has the capacity to execute multiple threads, but even then we are not utilizing it, right? So till now we haven't seen how to utilize the threads concept here. So we haven't seen how to utilize the threads. So what is the use when we use threads? Obviously we can reduce the time. Okay. We can execute our test in multi-threaded environment and we can reduce the execution time. Correct. So even if that one test is taking one minute and if you are executing hundred tests with thread count as five, that means every time we are going to execute five test cases. That means within one minute, you are executing five test cases. So like that, it will take only 20 minutes to execute all the hundred test cases, correct? Hardly 20 to 25 minutes. Even if there is a small delay or something, right? It will be 20 to 25 minutes. So where is the 20 to 25 minutes and where is the hundred minutes? So there is a huge difference, right? So based upon your system performance and everything, you need to use the multi-threading concept also guys. Okay. So first let's see without adding the parallel execution thing here. So first it is going to execute everything sequentially. So I have only two sets of data currently. So first one browser is going to open. So I have mentioned the Chrome browser. So Chrome browser will be opened and it will execute this test with the first set of data. Let's see. Now you see admin admin one, two, three actually passed and it is a successful test case because the welcome, I mean the home page is displayed. So it is going to verify this welcome message and the next test is going to be executed now. So you can see one after the other. So it is a sequential execution guys. This is called as sequential execution. So now admin has the username and test one, two, three as the password entered, but that is an invalid password, right? For admin username, admin one, two, three is the password. So that's why the login, I mean the home page is not displayed and the browser is also not closed because the test is failed. So let me manually close this browser. Here you can see two test runs and one is passed and one is failed. And in the bottom test ng results also, you can see this test is passed, which is having admin admin one, two, three as the data. And this one is failed, which is having admin and test one, two, three as the data. Correct. So when I executed this one, one after the other test case is actually executed. That means my test. So whatever the test method I have written here, this test method is executed two times. That is well and good because we are using the data provider and we have two sets of data. So my test method is actually executed twice, but it is executing the test method sequentially. So now let's see how to execute the test method parallelly. 
So for doing that, you need to specify one parameter for the data provider guys. So you need to specify one parameter to the data provider, how you want to pass the data to the test method. So currently we are not specifying any parameter here for the data provider. So that's why it is sending the data in the sequential order. That means one set every time. But if you set the parallel attribute to true, so there is an attribute called parallel. So if you set the parallel attribute to true, it will execute the entire test in a parallel way. So let's see. So here there is an attribute called parallel. So let's just type parallel. You can see parallel equal. We need to pass the Boolean value. So if you want to actually pass, I mean, if you want to execute the test in the parallel execution mode, then you need to pass a true value here. And if you want to execute it in the sequential order, you need to specify it as false. By default, it will be false guys. Okay. So how do you say that by default it is false? It's very simple. Just open the data provider. So here, if you come down, you can see the parallel default value is false, right? So what is written here, whether this data provider should be run in parallel or not. We are running the data provider in parallel guys. We are not exactly running the test in parallel. We are running the data provider in parallel. When you run the data provider in parallel, what happens? The data will be fed to the test method parallelly. So every time it fed to the test method data parallelly, a new browser will be opened and new test will be executed, right? So that is what we are going to see now. So if I put parallel false, then it will not execute anything. I mean, it will execute everything in the sequential order. There will not be any change. So if I mention this one as true, let's see what happens. So let me execute this run as test ng test. I have added only one parameter called parallel equal true guys. That's it. My data provider will be executed in a parallel mode. So you can see two browsers are actually opened, right? So one is actually opening with the invalid credentials and the other one is going to open with the valid credentials. So you see the right one is actually valid credentials, uh, sorry, invalid credentials and the left one is valid credentials. Correct. So this is failed and this is passed. So that's why that browser is closed. So if you see here, first test is failed and the second one is passed. So now we have seen how to execute the data provider parallelly, right? So we have seen how to execute the data provider parallelly with adding attribute parallel and we are setting the value as true for that one, right? So this is well and good, but let me just tell you one story. Okay. So if I have hundred sets of data and if I execute this, what happens at the same time, at the same time, hundred browsers will be opened, right? Hundred browsers will be opened and your network speed may not be supporting hundred browsers at a time or maybe your system performance is too low to handle the 100 browsers at a time. Correct? So in that scenario, what happens? Everything will get stuck, right? Everything will get stuck and nothing will go into execute actually. So that is why we need to have a mechanism to control how many browsers has to open, right? How many browsers means how many data sets we need to parallelly send. So we need to have a count. We need to have a mechanism where we can set one value and based on that value, the data provider can send the data in parallelly. So there should be a mechanism, right? So that mechanism is called as data provider thread count guys. So that is the second point here. How to control the thread count when using data provider. So if you have hundred test cases here, and if you're just using the parallel attribute, then all the hundred browsers, I mean, all the hundred sets of data will be fed to the test method and you will have hundred browsers open. So it's a waste of time because everything is going to stuck. Maybe your system performance is too low or maybe your network speed is too low. So there's no point of executing all the hundred in parallel. So that is why you should be able to control how many sets of data can be executed parallelly. So that mechanism is called as data provider thread counter. So now I will show you how to specify that one. So you cannot specify that data provider thread count inside the class. So just like how we mentioned this attribute, you cannot specify that attribute here. Then where do we need to specify that? You need to specify that attribute value inside the XML, testng XML. So we have already seen how to create one testng XML, right? So in that XML file, we need to specify the thread count. So here before that, first let me just add some more data sets. Something random values I'm giving. So how many sets of data we have? 
3 and 3 totally six sets of data we have right so let me just create the xml file here so how do you create the xml file you can manually create or you can just right click on the file for which one you want to actually create the test ng xml so i want to create the test ng xml file for this test method and for this data provider correct so basically that means for this basic test class i want to create the test ng xml file so just right click on the basic test.java and go to test ng and then convert to test ng so if you don't get the test ng option in that then that means you haven't installed the eclipse test ng plugin guys so please install the eclipse test ng plugin and then you can see that option so here it is asking the location so where do you want to actually store this test ng xml file you can store it in anywhere for now okay so i'm going to specify inside the resources folder so i have src folder in src i have test in test i have resources folder so under the resources i'll specify it as dp.xml so data provider.xml that means and suit name is just suit and test name is test that's it so where it is created under the te src test resources dp.xml so this is the one we are going to actually execute now so here there is something called thread counter which is actually auto generated here so i don't want the thread count because i am not going to show you how to execute the test methods parallelly i'm going to show you how to execute the data provider parallelly guys okay there is a difference so i'm going to just remove this and now i need to add one attribute here the attribute name is data provider thread counter so just type data so you cannot add the data provider thread count to test method guys so it should be added to the suit tag not to the test tag so here just try writing data provider thread counter so you will get this attribute data provider thread count by default the value is 10 but let's say i want to actually give two value okay that means every time so when i run this one in every parallel execution it has to provide only two sets of data it has to provide only two sets of data in the parallel mode that means how many times it has to provide first two sets of data and then two sets of data and then two sets of data totally three times it will pass every time two sets of data correct so if you mention this one as three then within two times each time three sets of data will be run parallelly right so i'm going to just mention this one as two for now and let me just execute this you no need to specify anything here guys so all you need to do is you need to specify the parallel attribute to true if you don't specify this one it will not execute so you need to specify your parallel attribute value as true and then add your data provider thread count value here in the xml file so from where you need to execute now if you execute it from the class it will not execute in the parallel mode with only two sets of data at a time because that configuration is not done in this class the configuration is made inside the test ng xml so we need to execute the test from here only guys okay so let me just execute this so only two browsers should be open now and like that it has to open three times so totally six browsers but each time only two browsers will be opened so let's see so you can see only two browsers are actually open so it is executing the test in both of the things one will be closed and one will be still opened only because the first set of data it is going right so one is going to be closed and one is going to be remaining same or maybe it internally picked some other order that's why both the browsers are not closing okay so let's just keep it like this and next second set of data has to go correct so i think there is some exception okay so what is that exception okay so my bad so i have actually repeated this data but i haven't modified these things right so i'm creating only two dimensional array and i'm just replacing it continuously here so instead i need to create six rows and each row has two columns correct so i need to update this first one so this is zero one and this will be two so let me execute this So you can see two browsers are actually invoked first time. So we are not sure which data is actually going in which one because it is everything parallelly, right? So we don't know which set is that it is actually picking.
Okay. So one of the test is completed. That is why it is opening another test. So one test when one test is completed, it will automatically pick the next set of data, guys. So now you can see again another two sets of data is actually executing. So totally six completed with these things, but every time only two browsers are actually opening, right? So instead of opening all the six browsers at a time, it is opening only two two browsers. So we were able to control the thread count, right? So that is the setting of this one, guys. So that is the setting of this data provider thread count. So when you set the data provider thread count to any value, only those many sets of data will be fed to the test method parallelly. Okay. So you can see completed six and one is passed and the remaining five are failed. So that is a expected thing because only this admin admin one two three is the correct set of username and password, and all the other things are invalid only. So not invalid, incorrect we can say. So I'm just closing these things. So now you understood right? So what exactly this thing is parallel? So if you want to execute your data provider in parallel, then you need to specify one attribute called parallel, and we need to set the value as true. If you are setting this value as false. it will not execute the data provider in the parallel guys by default the value will be parallel false okay so you need to set the value as true if you want to execute it in the parallel mode and if you want to control the thread count then you need to control that from the xml file only so just create one xml file for the test that you want to actually execute and at the suit level mention the data provider thread count one attribute and specify your count So, if you are specifying any value, only that many sets of data will be fed to the test method parallelly from the data provider, guys. So that is about this topic, guys. So parallel execution with data provider in test engine. So we are executing the data provider parallelly in test engine. So in our upcoming videos, we will see how to execute our test also parallelly in test engine, guys. Okay. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends. If you have any doubts please mention them in the comment section below thank you for watching bye bye